Welcome back to The Legend of Zelda The Complete Story Series. Last time we discussed what would happen if Link failed, but what would happen if Link succeeded and went back to warn Zelda? If you want to see how we got to this point in the story, make sure you go check out the first three parts of our Zelda The Complete Story Series. Seriously, why, why, would, you, why would you come to part four? There's, there's one, two, three, four. Four parts, and you're at four. Go to one. While we go through our quick disclaimer, down below you can find the responses people gave when we asked them what the saddest moment in the Zelda games was to them. The question of this episode is, what is your favorite Legend of Zelda sidekick? By this, I mean Midna, Navi, Tal, those kind of guys. The one that always follows you and fills you in. Alright, it's time for our starter disclaimer. You're probably going, oh my god, the Zeldas are connected. Yep, for the 25th anniversary, Nintendo released the official history book of Hyrule, linking together all of the timelines. At Orc Arena of Time is when things get sloppy though, as it breaks off into three different directions. If you want to see the beginning of the Hyrule world, then go check out episode 1. Also remember that each game is massively deep, with easter eggs, little plot points, and subplots, so we won't be able to explain everything. Make sure you bring up your favorite parts of each game in the comments down below. Also, thanks for trying to help me with all the pronunciations for these crazy Zelda worlds, but we're just gonna go ahead and say that I suck at pronouncing things, and we're gonna stick to however I get it out. Let us bring you back to another time. A time where Link succeeded in Ocarina of Time. Upon being sent back to his life as a child, he wasted no time in running to the courtyard and warning Zelda about what the future would bring if they went through with her original plan. To prevent this future from ever happening, Zelda gives Link the Ocarina of Time and tells him to run away with it to prevent Ganondorf from ever getting into the Sacred Realm. This prevents the future from ever happening, and the events of Ocarina of Time never happen. Link took Epona and ran off, but just as he was getting away, the Triforce of Courage on his hand glowed. He was being led on another quest, and it brought him to a forest where he lost track of his fairy friend and Avi. Months passed as he searched for her, until he seemingly passed through to another world known as Terminia, the parallel world of Hyrule. Now before we go forward, I saw a few comments in the previous video, and I've been reading a bit of speculation on the internet. There's a lot of people saying that this is another dream world similar to the one in Link to the Past. The official Nintendo response to this in the book states, it is a parallel world where many of the inhabitants look identical to the people of Hyrule. Speculation can still fly around though, this is just what Nintendo has officially stated on this matter. Now getting back to our game. This new world that Link traveled to was in dire trouble. The moon was going to crush it in three days. A young imp named Skull Kid had stolen Majora's Mask from the traveling mask salesman. This gave him terrible power, and being a prankster that he was, he decided to just go ahead and have some fun with it. But the power from the mask and his actions went farther than pranks, and the scope of his fun was being felt throughout all of Terminia. Once Link landed in this world, he felt the brunt of the Skull Kid's fun, as the Skull Kid stole Epona and the Ocarina of Time and changed Link into a Deku child. Link confronts the Skull Kid in an attempt to recover the Ocarina and the Majora's Mask, but he fails. It is then that Link notices the odd smiling moon in the sky is about to crush this world. Link quickly plays the Song of Time, which has a slightly different effect in this world. It rewinds time to three days ago, to the point at which Link arrived. Slightly confused by the fact that he's back where he started, He runs into the Happy Mask Salesman, who again explains that it's Majora's Mask causing the moon to crash into the world. He explains that Majora's Mask is a terrible and ancient power that was locked away forever until the Skull Kid found it. And unless Link can recover this mask, the entire world will end. Link is gonna need to bring together the power of an ancient tribe to stop the moon from crushing this world. And so he sets off on his quest. Using the newfound power of the Song of Time to reverse time a few days, Link lives the end of this world multiple times, and he also has to experience the sadness of the doomed residents of Terminia multiple times. Link goes forth and awakens the four sleeping giants. The giants literally hold their arms out and catch the moon, stopping it from crashing into the world.
But this is only the first step that Link must take to stop this doomed world. Upon stopping the moon, Link discovers that the mastermind behind everything isn't the imp causing pranks, but it's Majora's Mask itself. Link chases Majora's Mask into the center of the moon where Link must transform into the fierce deity to finish off this strange threat. Upon defeating it, Link returns the now silenced mask to the Happy Mask Salesman and watches as night falls on Clock Town on the third day finally. He continues to watch as the happy citizens finally have their festival of time, and with that, Link takes his leave of Terminia. He continued his journey to take the Ocarina of Time and hide it away from Ganondorf. Where he went from here, we don't know, for this Link vanished into history. Now to understand what's happening next, we need to go back to Hyrule. Princess Zelda was warned of what would happen to Hyrule if Link stayed, and they fought Ganondorf there. She sent Link off to hide the ocarina, leading to the Majora's Mask adventure. But what happened back in Hyrule? It's not like Ganondorf just turned around and was like, Oh, drat, darn kids messed up my plans! Well, the records are vague as to what happened, but Ganondorf began to wield magical power. Having power finally, it's safe to assume that he tried something to draw attention to himself, and he was captured, and the sages attempted to execute him on mystical grounds. While he was nowhere near as powerful as he would have been in the sacred realm, he was still strong, and he managed to kill one of the sages. In a panic, the sages used the Mirror of Twilight to banish Ganondorf to the Twilight Realm. With that, they were instructed to protect the mirror, and while they were protecting it, Ganondorf was running crazy in the Shadow Realm, driving it into madness. Ganondorf wouldn't be defeated so easily, though. He chose to create an alliance with the King of Twilight, Zant. He convinced Zant that if they could merge the Light and Twilight worlds, they could create the Dark World where they could rule. The Twilight Princess Midna chose to oppose their attempt, and as a result, she was cursed and she had to flee to the Light World. With Zant and Ganondorf launching their invasion on the Light Realm, the current Princess Zelda was faced with a horrible decision, to watch her kingdom burn to war, or allow them to rule without a fight. She chose the latter, allowing Zant to take control of the Light World. She knew that eventually, the Triforce would select someone to save the day once again. With Zant in control, Midna began her search for a way to stop him, and restore peace to both lands. Just as she was beginning her search, though, a mighty beast jumped before her. It was none other than our descendant of the Hero of Time, Link, transformed into a beast by the Twilight. Midna pondered for a second, and then remembered the prophecies stating that the savior of the world would appear in the form of a beast. With that, she decided to join Link, and they began their journey to defeat Zant and take back the Twilight Realm. After they restored Link's true form and gathered together the few shadows, they were attacked by Zant, who brought Midna to the brink of death and changed Link back into his beast form. All hope seemed lost until our beast Link met with Princess Zelda. Zelda advised that they would need the Master Sword to defeat such an evil, and then used every bit of her magic to restore Midna's health. With that, they began their new journey, and found the Master Sword. The sword was so powerful that it dispelled Link's beast form once again. Off they hurried to the Twilight Mirror to go back and defeat Zant, only to find the mirror broken. It is there that they found out that everything was due to Ganondorf's banishment into the Twilight Realm, and it was him who was pulling Zant's strings. Midna was furious, but they restored the mirror, and then rushed to the Twilight Realm where they fought and defeated Zant. Link then returned to the Light Realm, 
where the King of Darkness, Ganondorf, was ruling from his throne in the Hyrule Castle. The two then began an epic fight of epic proportions that was just epic, which takes place on horseback. Upon his defeat, the Triforce of Power leaves his hand, stripping him of all of its power. Once he was finally defeated, Zant was defeated, and the invasion was over, all the curses were lifted. Midna transformed into a beautiful princess. She foresaw that the only way to prevent this from happening again was to break the mirror. But she also knew this meant that she could never return. Link and Midna shared a final farewell, with Midna only asking that the people of the Light World will never forget that there are people in the shadows. And with that, the mirror was shattered, and she was gone forever. Link replaced the Master Sword in the forest and returned to his hometown to live the rest of his life. The gods blessed Hyrule once again and basked the world in light. Time for another sidebar. We're about to enter the second Four Swords adventure. The footage that we use here is the same footage that we used in our previous Four Swords explanation. I couldn't find any video or images for the first one, so I just used images and videos from this one. So you're about to recognize some of this, but the stories are accurate and they are separate from each other. Several hundred years after Ganondorf was defeated, relationships between the Garuda tribe and Hyrule finally became friendly again. After everything seemed okay between the tribe and the nation though, a new Ganondorf was born, and he wasted no time in ruining these happy times by going to a nearby forbidden pyramid and stealing the trident and the dark mirror. By taking the dark mirror though, he plunged the world into darkness once again. His next plan was to revive Vati, an evil sorcerer from so long ago, and in order to do this, he decided to bring Shadow Link into this world from the dark mirror. Well, this was a great plan he had, but how could he possibly free Vati from the Four Sword? Well, don't worry, because at this exact moment, Princess Zelda and the Sages were worried about the seal, and they went to go check to make sure it wasn't weakening. As they entered the Elemental Sanctuary to see if everything was okay, though, suddenly they all got swept away. In a panic, this generation's Link rushed to save the day and went for the closest sword. That sword was the Four Sword and upon drawing it, Link was split into four links once again, and the seal of a T was broken. You see, the sages and Zelda were swept away by the Shadow Link's trap in an attempt to get Link to break the seal, which he did. Now our four links set off to reseal the T and defeat Ganon. The adventure requires the four links to free the sages, free the Knights of Hyrule, and acquire the royal jewels from the darkness. Once they did everything, the four links then climbed to the Tower of the Winds in order to save Princess Zelda. At the top, they found the Dark Mirror and Vati. It was in his final fight with this version of Link that Vati was finally completely defeated. And upon defeating Vati, the Demon King Ganon appeared. In one final epic fight, the four links defeat Ganon, sealing him into the Four Sword where Vati was sealed for so long. And with that, the sword was returned with its new prisoner, Demon King Ganon. The kingdom was happy, and everyone celebrated. And at this point, this timeline ends. And that's it for the child timeline. It has far less games than the failed timeline. This is also probably the saddest timeline as you get to watch the world end multiple times and say your final farewells to Midna. Thank you for joining us, and don't forget to check out our other complete story series. Also, don't forget to answer today's question in the comments down below, who is your favorite Zelda sidekick? And as always, you can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and subscribe to the channel. Everything is in the description down below to get yourself more comedy, reviews, and complete stories.